Hey guys, welcome to the Average Joe Cooking Show. Today, we're going to be doing some grilled chicken tacos and uh, some fresh homemade guacamole. So stick around, let's have some fun. Welcome to the Average Joe Cooking Show. I'm your host as always, Stu. And today we're going to be making grilled chicken tacos. Now it sounds pretty simple given the fact that you can pretty much go to any store and buy your pre-packaged seasoned chicken to make tacos out of. Well today we're gonna to be going a little old school and just using the ingredients you have in your cupboard already. So no reason to go out and buy stuff you don't really need. What you're gonna need is some boneless skinless chicken breasts. Uh, I've had these thawing out in the refrigerator overnight. And when you thaw out in the refrigerator, especially with chicken, I always like to leave them in a nice Tupperware uh, container because of the juice that's in the bags. And that saves you from making a mess inside your refrigerator. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna pound out the chicken, we're gonna season it, and then we're gonna grill it. Now, if you have a grill at home, uh, you can use that. If you don't, you can buy one of these electric grills. They're uh, pretty reasonable in price. And if worse comes to worse, you can always just fry it. But we're, uh, we're grilling today, so let's go ahead and get busy. So what we're gonna do here is we're going to pound out some chicken so it's nice and flat. I'm going to get this out. There we go. Ooh there we go. Now we cover it with plastic wrap for why? Because we don't want to get splattered with little bits of chicken when we start hammering this. Down nice and easy. Okay, now nice even strokes. You don't have to kill it. Let the hammer do the work. There we go. It's almost double in size. So let's move you over a little bit. There we go. And last but not least. All right, there we go. Chicken is all nice and pounded out. Now what we have here is we've got a half a teaspoon of kosher salt, a teaspoon of onion powder, a teaspoon of ground cumin, a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, and a whole tablespoon of chili powder. Now we're going to grab a small little bowl. My little spice dishes work good for these. And we're just gonna combine them all together. And you've just made taco seasoning. That simple. Just mix it all up. All right. So, we are just sprinkling this all over the chicken. You know, we're grilling, we're putting this on before we grill the chicken because we want this to kind of work its way into the meat as it's cooking. Gives it a, a better flavor than if you were to just cook it and then add the seasoning. Okay, now over here, what we've got is, this is actually a cast iron grilling grate. It works on a stove top, 
but I've modified it to this little electric griddle that I have. Uh, they actually make electric grills, that's why I was talking about that earlier. What you're going to want to do is you want to make sure that uh, your chicken doesn't stick. So what I've got here is a little extra virgin olive oil. Just run a nice little bead across, get yourself a silicone brush or any kind of basting brush that you have available in your house. And you're just going to baste the grill so the chicken doesn't stick. There we go. Yeah. Nicely. Okay. We'll set that there. Now we're going to go ahead and place these down, the seasoned side down. And with the remaining seasoning, we'll season the other side of Okay, there we go. Now, I have to do a little quick cleanup, so come on back in a couple minutes and we'll get busy on that guacamole. All right, now we've got our board all cleaned up and ready for when the chicken is all cooked, so we're gonna move that out of the way for right now. I'm gonna bring in my vegetable board, my knife, and I've got enough for four avocados here to make some guacamole, so got about a half a cup of diced uh, tomato. We're gonna dice up an onion. So let's put the tomato in. I'm gonna dice up this onion real quick. About a nice large onion like that, you're only gonna to wanna to use maybe a quarter of it or a half of a small onion. Now you can use whatever kind of onion you want, red, white, yellow, it doesn't make a difference. I like the red because it's a sweeter onion and it's also kind of prettier to look at, so. And that's all we're going to use right there. So let's set this in this bowl for now. So. What we're doing is we're mincing it up the onion. We're getting it a little bit smaller so it'll incorporate well into the avocado. Oh my goodness. Onion. Whew. All right, that's good. Now, yes, I am crying. This is what I was talking about. I've tried every little remedy that I have heard of on the internet, old wives' tale that I can think of to keep you from uh, crying when you're cut cutting onions, but I haven't found anything that works. So if you know of anything, 
email us because I'd like to try it. The important thing is not to wipe, you just dab. All right. So, limes. We're gonna need the juice of two limes. We're gonna cut these in half. That was a pretty tough skin. There we go. I'm gonna get my handy dandy lemon and lime juicer. These things are awesome. Every last bit of the juice. Just completely turns it inside out. Love it. You know, that's, that's pretty juicy lime, so actually I'm gonna go ahead and call that good with maybe one and a half limes. Uh, we can use this to squirt over the chicken later if we want. Speaking of which, it's time to flip. Don't lose track of your chicken. Yeah, there we go. Nice little crust on it. Looks good. Oh, it looks very good. Okay, we'll let that go for about five more minutes and we should be golden. Okay, we've got the juice of one and a half limes in there. Now, this is something that you're gonna have to experiment with over the time, over the period of you cooking, is that sometimes recipes, uh, as you're putting them in, especially when you're using fruits and vegetables, it's, it's kind of more of an art than a precise science because you kind of have to eyeball and figure, well, maybe that's a little bit too much juice or maybe that's not enough or that's too much avocado or not enough. So that's why I'm gauging as we go along what I'm gonna need. If I find the guacamole mixture is too runny once I add these four avocados, well, obviously I'm gonna add an extra avocado. So that's how that works. Slicing avocados. Easiest way I've ever found to do them is just let the knife roll all the way around, give them a twist, hold the avocado down, and scoop out the pit just like that. So let me go ahead and do these three and then we'll get back to you. Isn't it always that the smallest avocados have the biggest pit and the biggest avocados have the smallest pits? Or the big, never mind. Okay. Now once you've got the avocados pitted, you're gonna go ahead and just scoop them out with a spoon into your mixture. Now I've had a, people ask me, well, how do you keep the avocado from turning brown if you're not gonna serve it right away? And there's a couple tricks to that we'll get to as soon as I can fish that stem out of there. And uh, one way you can do it is once you've got the, uh, the guacamole made up and put into a dish, you get yourself some plastic wrap and you push the plastic wrap down straight onto the guacamole mixture so that there's absolutely no air getting into it. And that'll help keep it from turning brown. The lime juice also helps. Uh, you can use other stuff like fruit fresh uh, other than that, you're just going to have to eat it quick and, you know, it's guacamole, so there's no problem with eating it quick. I love avocados. Something else you guys might want to try on a totally unrelated subject, but still avocado related, is next time you make a BLT, bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwich, 
slice up some avocado, put it on there. Oh, it's so good. Now, unfortunately, my oldest son is allergic to avocados, but me and my youngest son aren't, so. You gotta be careful who you serve guacamole or avocados or avocado-based foods too. Make sure they don't have any food allergies. All right. Almost there. What we have here is we have a quarter teaspoon of celery salt. Now, you can use regular salt, kosher salt. I prefer celery salt just because it adds a little something interesting to it. So, voila. And then we're gonna use half a can of chopped jalapenos. Just because I like my stuff with a kick. I don't like it burning the crap out of my mouth, but I do like to know that it's spicy. Muri caliente. What do I do with that spoon? I have a plethora of spoons. All right. There we go, it's a four ounce can of chopped jalapenos. Used about two ounces of it. Trust me, I'll use this on the tacos when they're ready. Speaking of which, our chicken is ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and place it to cool down just a little bit. Turn off my grill. All right, now, let's move some of this stuff out of the way. And now we're going to mix up our guacamole. All right, now that's pretty good, but we got a taste test to make sure. <laughs> Very good. Hint of lime right off the bat, jalapenos, burning on the backside, which is perfect. Give that a couple more minutes for those flavors to kind of marry together. That's gonna to be outstanding guacamole. All right. Now, let's get back to our Chico. Let's see here, and we need a slicer. and a fork. Now what you wanna do is you just wanna slice them in half, like so. And then, cut them into strips. Or you can cut them into strips and then slice them. You just wanna make them, you know, little pieces that'll fit nicely into a taco shell. Now of course you're gonna wanna have to uh, grate up some cheese or buy the, the bag uh, shredded cheese, but a little tip between you and I, you pay more for the shredded stuff. So if you buy just a regular block cheese and do it yourself, you save yourself a little bit of coin. And lately, with the way things are going, who couldn't, you, uh, who couldn't stand to save a little coin? There we go, cook perfectly. Still nice and tender on the inside. Matter of fact. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, if I wasn't so humble, I'd just rave about my cooking. That right there will feed six people relatively well. And you notice that I only used three nice light, large chicken breasts. So, tacos are a fun way to spice up the weeknight. Uh, easy way to impress a friend or a date. And why don't you guys come on back here in a minute. I'm gonna have a friend of the show over to sample one of my tacos. This is a friend of the show, Taylor, my producer's wife. And she is feeding two, so we give her a taco. You're welcome. Thank you. That's right. If she wasn't married, she'd be mine. All right. Thanks for coming. Hope you guys have fun. If you're interested in this, check out the website. As always, we'd like to thank Weinegers for uh, supplying our food. Check out your local Weinegers. They've always got great deals. Until then, happy eating. Thanks.